Bro, I pressed the button. Let's go! I will take it. All right, y'all. So tonight's tonight's video is going to be. It should be an interesting one because if I ever go on Twitter, Facebook, even on my YouTube comments, a lot of people are asking how to deal with borrow. This is like a very common question that I always get. Like, when do I press a button? Um, when do I? stop him you know like when is it my turn to start offense like these are very common questions so today's video is going to be a group effort all right i am going to be answering questions from the chat about something that might bug them pertaining to the matchup and to help with this i'm going to bring a very special guest with the video apparently this person also hates borrow they also have a very tough time with ball rocks. so let's see if we could contact this hollywood person they will actually pick up how are you how are you i'm doing pretty I'm good very well how are you i'm doing marvelous you know welcome to the team for this video and i thank you for being a part of it I'm so happy to be a part of it all right so i didn't pretty much gave a gist on what's going to happen um it's not written this isn't re rehearsed so any questions that the chat has and any questions that Miss Patricia will ask, I will be heading into training mode to demonstrate how to deal with these circumstances. So with that being said, let's get to it. guess my first question is how do I kill a rog? Because I don't how, like it. How do I kill a rog? Okay, so how to kill a rog? Stay just outside of standing fairs and punish that fool? That is a good tip. That is a good tip. All right, so first things first, let's go over a general overview of Balrog. All right, so as we all know, Balrog is a character that's able to play both defensive and offensive because of his range on his buttons dash straight and ex straight and also with his buttons a lot of his buttons are plus on block so when it comes down to people saying when do i take my turn when is it my turn when it comes out of fighting ball rock you have to block right because just about all his buttons are plus unless we're talking about a sweep which is negative 14 anything that's not plus is safe right so his low forward is negative two his stand affairs is negative three. Negative three is punishable, but due to the spacing and the pushback on it, you can't punish it. The general game plan that you want with Ken is to try and stay within range of straight. I know that I, I know it's kind of hard to say that because with straight, it's just easy to bully. But you don't want to play outside of that range because if you play outside of that range, it's, it's going to be way easier for me to bully you, right? Do I want to stay, I guess, two squares? Is that like appropriate distance? It's kind of hard to go off the squares because when you think of neutral, like it's always moving back and forth. So if you're paying attention to the squares, then yeah, about roughly one to two. So this is basically me speaking of how Seven plays the matchup. Shout out to Sevens, one of the best NA Kens out there. He normally plays in and outside of range of straights so when he's playing outside of straight range he's looking for me to whiff it but when he's playing inside he's making sure that that option isn't available because if i go to throw a miss space straight it's easy for him to punish it with standing light kick into i think light tattoo and then um it's time for me to guess because the, the better that ken is able to push you in the corner that matchup easily goes from being a bad matchup to nice and ken's favor for a Ken player, would mm -hmm. you suggest trigger one V skill one for this matchup? Yes. Um, v trigger two itself, it seems that it prioritizes fireballs, right? So That's correct. if it prioritizes fireballs, Barog doesn't have a fireball. So with the enhanced abilities of a V trigger one, I don't see why not. And with the V skill one, it allows for 
better corner carry in crush follow-ups because you can't get a proper follow-up with v-scale 2 if you crush like say you crush with roundhouse you could v-scale 1 run but I, I don't think you could do anything after v-scale 2 right now you can oh now um, you can with with its buffs you can do something but i agree with you um i'm a v-scale 2 user but right. i agree with you uh when it comes to getting something off with the v, v skill one okay so if v skill two wait so was it v skill two and trigger two that got buffed or was it just v skill two because i know in the recent patch they made it um they made it right known. in the in the patch prior they they buffed v trigger two right in in this patch uh basically they've they buffed um, my buttons to be able to link easier into V-Trigger 2. Okay. Okay. So if it's buffed, then maybe we would have to lab it out. But if we're speaking on like pre-patch, I would say that V-Skill 1, Trigger 1 is always the go-to route for the Balrog matchup because one, Balrog doesn't have a fireball. So V-Trigger 2 isn't necessarily needed unless there's something i'm missing if a ken player here wants to follow with what i said please feel free to but from my experience and what i've seen i don't think v trigger 2 has a presence in that matchup i agree i just wanted i just wanted to to ask for an explanation for you to be able to to kind of elaborate a little bit on that so loanator i want to know how to deal with ex dash straight pressure in the corner and how to deal with dash straight mid screen all right so how do you deal with dash straight well i'm gonna start off by saying that ex straight is plus one right so the best way to deal with this is to either block or if you don't want to block depending on the situation you can always go with reversal my back is to the wall and you see that balrog is trying to make space trying to get out the corner and you see that they do ex straight i'm not supposed to be able to block this all right so if this was real game that would be a knockdown. I don't know why I'm able to block it, but one way to deal with EX straight, two ways actually, right? You can either block it or you can reversal it, depending on the situation. Because it's plus one, which allows me to follow up with standing light kick for a true frame trap that allows for me to contest three frame. So how to deal with it mid screen? Uh, same thing I told Miss Patricia is that you want to play outside of the range of it. If you're a sitting duck against Balrog, okay, I don't know why I was able to view versus that one on time and get knocked down. Let me turn it off real quick. So the best way to deal with straights is to not allow Balrog to space you. If you ever allow Balrog to space you, really and truly you can't deal with it unless you view versus and get the knockdown. But as long as I keep you spaced, this is a free bully option. Uh, you can start incorporating neutral jumps to where if I do it and you time it right with the neutral jump, you, you get a full punish. So okay. I feel like people who ask about straights and how to deal with it, they kind of sit at that range to where it's powerful. It's unstoppable. You can't do anything about it. But if you're playing footsies, you're moving around, you're getting in his face, you're making him feel uncomfortable, you're actually fighting him, straights are not as powerful the closer you are because the closer you are if i throw a straight it's a punish right right sada i'm i'm glad you said that people lock up against Balrog. people are scared of the fact that he has straight right so oh that's me i'm always scared right and Balrog is actually one of them characters where it's easy to just freeze up against him because you know what this character could do right you have to block your legs because you never know when EX dash low is coming. Like the move is actually fast. The closer I am, the faster it comes out. The further I am, the longer it takes to come out. I, I don't know if y'all knew that or not, but the further you are, this move has long startup on it compared to how close I am, which makes total sense. But a lot of people may not knew that. So there are times or there are characters where I would say, like, for example, Karen. Yes. It's a little bit easier to jump in on Karen because she doesn't really have a true anti-air, I guess, if that's correct. Um, 
Is it opposite for Balrog, in which I probably should never jump in on this character? Oh yeah, it's it's not a good idea to ever jump in on Balrog. Like, if you get away with a jump in on Balrog, then the Balrog wasn't ready. Like, but jump should never happen on Balrog, because standing medium is hands down one of the best anti airs in, in the game. Okay, good to know. Standing medium is his go-to, and crouching fierce is his option select, depending on who he's going against, like Abigail, Birdie, uh, Zangief, Fang with those floaty jump animations. Right, right. So it just depends on which button it is, right? Because I have a medium, so it allows me to dash up. It allows me to side switch because of how fast it is compared to heavy. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Chung Li. Chung Li's standing light kick allows for side switch also because it's a fast anti air. Makes okay. sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So to elaborate a little bit more on Lower Nader's question, yes, you want to be able to play footsies with Balrog. You don't want to freeze up against his character. If Balrog ever see you crouch blocking, sitting still, not knowing what to do, just basically prepare yourself for bullying. So neutral jumps, um, closing the distance, and not being afraid to fight the character. If Khan asked, or he said, Ken should be looking for, looking to whiff punish Rog. So for a character like Ken, going into the match, what should my game plan be? Hmm. You're... Like, what am I looking out for? Well, from Ken's, per okay, wait, so is this from Ken's perspective or from Balrog? Mm -hmm. From Ken, like your game plan? Wait, wait, you're talking about Right, if I'm about to, if, if you and I are doing what we do when we go into ranked match together and you're observing my match with a Balrog, what would your advice to me be in, like, what I should be looking for? So like, should I, should I punish this? Should I, should I be focusing more on neutral jumps? Should I be, um, should what? I be, you know, more um, in, like, a neutral space? Like, what would you suggest? Basically the same thing with Loanator and thinking about straight, right? You want to be able to set the pace, right? You want to let him know that you can't just bully me. And what I mean by that is you have to incorporate neutral jumps, um, use your buttons. So for Ken, low forward is low forward is good. Um, they buffed Crouching Fierce, I think it was. Crouching Fierce and Crouching Medium, I think, were mm -hmm. Ken buffs. So, low forward, crouching medium, standing medium. Because when it comes down to neutral, it's a lot. But overall game plan, you want to set the pace with offense and be able to set the pace to force him to whiff. So, the so preacher said people act like Balrog only has a straight. For a lot of beginner players, they really only do have a straight. Right, right. I, I, I can 100% attest to that because I've been... I've been stuck in, in like, the range between gold to platinum for X amount of time. And any time you face a Balrog, I would say 9 out of 10, that's their strategy. Right. So I would say this applies to um, a very, uh, so more lower level, I would say. With lower level rogs, they tend to not have footsies in neutral, right? So their go-to button is hands down straight so mm -hmm. if you see that ball rogs are using straights a lot you just have to start incorporating neutral jumps more like you have to give a ball rog a reason to not just do it willy-nilly whether it's punishing it for misspacing it or causing them to whiff it with neutral jumps got it so basically this right, is yeah anytime anytime i have successfully beat a ball rog which is very rare for me um I have noticed that I've incorporated more neutral jumps. Yes. And I grabbed a lot. That was one of the things that I definitely did. Yes, grabs. Ken's game plan is to find a way. Well, actually, this is what everybody's game plan, right? Find a way to land the hit. Find a way to open your opponent up. 
to cause that one mistake to happen because it only takes one mistake to score a knockdown and then it's time to push them to the corner right. so in a sense versus bar rock nine times out of ten at your level right because it's kind of tedious to base this off a higher level rank match so yeah broader sense wouldn't make sense mm -hmm. so lower level look for ways to bait the straight oh that's a good that's very good yes lower levels look for ways to bait the straight i like that it rhymes it's cute <laughs> i uh, like it. this might be another habit that a lot of people Oh, well, actually, Miss Patricia, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that. This is another habit that show those, right? Fireball characters. Mm -hmm. They tend to fear Balrog from the jump because of the simple fact that he has V-Skill 1. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if people kind of notice or not, but the closer... Oh, it's harder for me to react to Fireball. If you feel like you're not within range to throw a button that means you're within range to throw a fireball so let me switch to ken real quick so despite how scary it is i should be in a closer range to be able to effectively use fireball to punish him. yes and that's what boils down to being afraid to fight the matchup because of what the character has in his toolkit you you understand that he has v skill one so you're kind of limiting yourself to how many fireballs you throw which is totally understandable because you don't want to get hit like nobody wants to get hit but right. you don't you don't want to take away from your toolkit because a character has an answer like the matchup is already bad mm -hmm. but you don't want to make it worse by not using your options right so um your best button is roundhouse right because it reaches the furthest mm -hmm. so outside of this range is basically where fireballs are unreactable in order for me to v skill this fireball from like right here i have to hard commit to it and if i commit to this i get smacked uh playback recording that's negative four up close right so if i hard commit to this that's a punish and guess what I'm getting pushed to the corner Okay, yeah. so I guess my next question leading up to this is what is punishable and what is not? What you know, is safe on ROG and what is able to be punished? To be honest, and I'm going to be completely honest with you, the only time you could punish a ROG is if he mess up. You right. need to elaborate more on this. <laughs> I did not like that answer in any way, shape, or form. Here's why. Okay, so okay. light straight is negative four, right? If I miss space uh... this, if I miss space this, you could punish me. If I don't space this wrong, you can't punish me. Oh, because the spacing is just impossible for me to do anything. I don't. Ha okay, I understand. Yes, and another common move is dash low. It's negative seven. But if I space this right, you can't punish it. So the only time you could punish a raw is if he mess up. It kind of sucks to say it like that, but it's true. <laughs> the dash low on block, isn't that... Oh, no, it's not. All right. Yes, it's, it's negative seven. So if I do this up close, that's a full-fledged punish. But, really? Yeah. That sucks. Up, up close. Up close, yeah. Uh but back here, or like right here, can't punish that. I could do this at anywhere on the map, cause cause it's negative two. I could do this up close. Like Kiktatsu has to be point blank for a three frame, but the spacing won't allow it unless it's close enough. That I, that I understand. That I get. But yeah, spacing is I think what what really throws a lot of players at my level off. Um, because the thing is, for those who are starting to understand frame data, because it happened to me. If I hear negative four, I'm like, okay, great. I can punish with negative three, but it's not always like that because of spacing. Well, no. Okay. All right. So I don't want to get nobody into no bad habits. You should right. never attempt to try and punish straights with light Tatsu. Like, let's not even make that a thing. If, okay. if Balrog miss space straight, standing like it, like that is the, the root to all evil for Balrog. 
Ryu has it, Ken has it, Sakura has it, Sagat has it with stand and jab. That is your go-to punish for straights. Even if I thank God and spaced it right, standing like kick will reach. So let's not even have Tatsu become an answer because it doesn't make sense. You say, how do I beat meaty overhead low mix? Yeah, if it's a meaty situation where you're waking up, like you actually have to hold it. You say, how do I beat item? I want to get that NLBC money. Okay, so if you're a ball rock player, if you're a ball rock player and you fight Adam and he sees that you're a ball rock player, you might as well put the controller down. We don't like the matchup. That matchup is not good whatsoever. Like, there's not a single ball rock on this planet that likes the Laura matchup. So, if you play ball rock, good luck. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, go back to character select. All right, so high low mix. I'm going to set my wake up option to three frame. Record wake up option three frame. All right, there we go. Oops. Count a hit. Count a hit. Ugh. Count a hit. Meaty overhead. That's a high low mix that you have to hold. Now, don't get me wrong, in certain situations that doesn't work. So I can't do it off of every situation. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I'm gonna go ahead and expose the setups that actually are not true. And that's actually one common one that a lot of ball rocks get away with. So a very common one that you see is the three frame tire combo, V skill cancel into overhead. All right, so this cancel by itself is negative one. Negative two if I time it slightly wrong, but negative one at best. This situation is nowhere near right, and ball rocks get away with this all the time. Now, if you back recovery, that's a different situation. That actually works. That actually works. So it's more of a read, if anything. But if you quick rise after the three frame, you will beat the um, V skill dash up. Another situation where the high low isn't real, a lot of Balrogs don't do this, but I wouldn't suggest testing it all the time. But depending on which version, right? Depending on which version I do of the dash cancel will alter the frame advantage on quick rise. So if I do the light kick version, I'm zero, but I can become plus one, negative one if I mess it up. But if I do the medium straight into the cancel, I mean the plus one or plus two. So in this situation, I wouldn't even really bother about trying to determine which one he's doing. Cause unless you see the startup, of the V-Skill cancel, then you'll be able to tell which one it is, but I wouldn't really bother trying it. it. It's not worth it. You say, how do I blow up your block screens? To be honest, it's kind of hard to blow up Rog's block screens because all his buttons are plus. You know what this lesson is turning into? It's turning into a lot of how-tos, and your answer is, you can't. You can't. I mean, if I'm being honest, like, a lot of wrong. <laughs> I mean, it's a fair statement. Because the, because what I'm, you know, what I asked is, what's punishable? And the answer was, it's kind of hard to because all of his buttons are plus. So there's not, so just to reiterate, there's nothing negative about his buttons. No. Oh. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, so, um. <laughs> like, I wouldn't lie. I feel like when people fight raw, and this is dead honesty. I'm not firing shots at nobody, but this is like dead honesty. When people fight raw, they 
don't want to block for the amount of time that they actually have to fight. No, my bad, that they actually have to block. And this is the same thing with Bison. Bison will blow somebody up for not wanting to block. Like, these two characters that are on the screen right now, like, you have to block against them. Like, Crouch and Jab, plus three. Stand Jab, plus three. Stand and Kick, plus two. Plus two. Roundhouse, plus three. The buttons that are actually safe and punishable, you can't punish them. Like, got it. Like, I, I, I'm not lying to y'all. Like, these are two characters that you actually have to block. Okay. So, right. Okay. So then that takes us down to the kind of nitty gritty of it. In order to be able to overcome this character, and I'm going to be saying this in a very beginner level because I can't speak for higher level. Mm -hmm. Um, once again, the strategy should be to look for ways to bait the straight and emphasis on block. Is that correct? Yes. With this, with Balrog versus Ken, you have to play pretty patient. Right, because Balrog's best tool is straight. It's his skip neutral button. So straights is his go-to button, especially with EX straight. Whenever I feel like closing the distance, I can close the distance while being plus one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Being able to play around straight is very important. So it's like, yeah, we all got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Like He's the just whole... saying for Ken, yes. Yeah. We all got to do it. The whole cast has to <laughs> deal with straight. Unless you're Sakura, where straight shouldn't be used. Unless you commit to EX straight. Right. So this is for on paper. On paper, who would be the bad matchups? Oh, not on your Not your personal feelings toward it. It's on paper. Like, for example, Laura, everybody can 100% agree. That was the first one that, that Preacher said. Oh, Laura, Mika, all the command grab characters. Okay. And they buffed Alex. Alex was the only command grab character that Barog was able to bully. But now <laughs> since they buffed now since they buffed him and made him an actual character, he's uh pretty problematic. Karen too. Karen, Karen kind of limits Barog's options options and forces him to um watch his feet more than he has to or should want to now who are balrog's favorites to fight rose ed monat folk poison their motive is to keep him out but you can't keep balrog out because of straights and if you have a fireball v skill one prioritizes that Rexy's like, <laughs> help her. Yeah, I picked up the game today. I know nothing about this game. I'm asking all of the Street Fighter for dummy questions. Right, like any character that's supposed to quote unquote zone you and have a fireball, Balrog gives them a problem because of V skill 1 and EX straight. So if you're playing outside of straight, you ought to be like right here. So if you feel like you're not playing within this space in order to punish with straight, you want to be like right here using your buttons, and using your fireballs. And then once you feel like a straight is coming, you come back to this spacing. I'm having standing heavy punch PTSD. Um, well, that's that's like a mini straight. This button is actually like a mini straight. A mini straight. Yes, it reaches you have everything, don't you? It reaches just just a little bit, not as far as straight, but yeah, it's it's basically just a mini straight. Um, same thing with this button. If you play outside the range and you see it, this is something that you have to react to. Can you actually? Can you lion breaker that? Um. Can you hit standing medium uh, kick? It looked like this. It looked like the heavy kick whiffs. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So your go-to options to punish these whiff buttons: crouch and fierce. No, my, yeah, crouch and fierce and the heavy tattoo. Standing medium punch into medium tattoo. And does crouch and medium work? Look like it doesn't work. 
No. Hmm. Now it looked like standing medium is going to be the best bet. Yeah, standing medium looks nice. Mm -hmm. 176. Or that, 207. Yeah. Crotch and medium punch won't link into the um target combo. But I think this is the ideal punish right there. Yeah, I would say so. And never let a ball rock get away with the incomplete target combo. Because I think that's another strain that they do in lower ranks a lot also. Sometimes they don't finish it. The second oh, hit... Oh, yeah, for sure. I, yeah, people are afraid to punish it because they don't know what to punish it with. Yeah. Nightmare, you can't tell all the secrets? Uh... Well, this is a how to kill a ball rock video. Yeah, and I think this might be the one that a lot of people have been looking for. I mean, to be honest with you, a throw is even a good punish also. Like, if you're in the corner and they do this, you could back throw and not in the corner. It's still a punish. Oh, that's nice. And then on knockdown, you go for overhead. At least that's an option. Yeah. So sometimes you just you can look at the situation and be like, do I want to take him mid screen for a punish, or do I want to sacrifice some damage and put him where I want him at? Yes, how to kill Baro. Um, we first covered that you actually have to you, you can't be scared to fight this character. If you're scared to fight this character, he's going to bully you with straights. You have to be active. You have to be moving. You have to be neutral jumping, like playing with his mind let them know that if you throw a straight and you whiff it you will get punished um not being afraid to get in his face and press buttons can i punish a straight um can i react to a straight uh and punish while in motion or do i always have to block it will it trade with certain buttons okay so straights do have same. Okay, so straights do have some collisions where you can trade, but sometimes trades can work in Balrog's favor or against Balrog. But so it's best to block. Preachers yes. don't react. Yeah, it's if if you try and stuff a straight, mm -hmm. it's actually a I toss up. I wouldn't be at able to point. DP. It? No, no, don't, no, no don't, no. Yeah. Blocking is the best try. bet. Okay. Like some characters have better trade situation than others. Cause sometimes if you try and contest a straight on startup, your character can actually crumble and Balrog gets like a sweep follow up, a low target combo follow up, like yeah, it's it's best to block it. Got it. Block it or force it to whiff. You could parry, you could parry it. But that's that's commitment to walk up crouch black is another good answer to it like the more the, the more you slowly take the space i don't really want to encourage people to just do stuff but sometimes you have to just do stuff right so sometimes when it comes down to respect you have to make a player respect you like if they see that you're not blocking that you're just getting hit then it's no need to show respect like that's something that you actually have to like instill into somebody or um when you notice that they're just hitting buttons because you know they're not, they're not afraid of getting punished but like you said with a rug it's kind of hard to punish be um, because they're positive on everything right with raw it's forcing him to mess up with either a miss space straight a whiff straight or landing most hits rods being carried don't have fundamentals Nagato thank you for the 7 months my dude Rudy Lee what's going on with you man yo Amtrak I see you in the building Amtrak? Amtrak. I 
Are you referring to Amine TRC? Mm hmm. <laughs> Is that who you called Amtrak? Yeah. Is that is that not his name? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> uh huh. Uh. Yeah, please continue. But uh, I feel like that wraps it up unless somebody else has a question. So what's your conclusion? Overall conclusion to this whole summary is that you have to actually fight against Balrog and don't be a sitting duck and you say so to recap Rog is unpunishable a safe strong fundamental bar Rog is unpunishable yes in order to really punish and get started on Rog you have to I, I would say the mind game is essential here so seeing that Rog is safe on space specials and he's plus on ex straight and safe on ex low right you have to find ways to open him up whether it's him whiffing a button him whiffing a straight uh, you just have to find ways to land that hit and force him to commit to something that's going to get him punished i think that's a fair game plan i think that's a fair um assessment for somebody going in Oh, oh, okay. Actually, don't miss no Oki. You know what? Who? Wait, who said that? Before we close out this video, who said that? Wait, who said that? Wait, who said that? Oh. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking for it. All right. Don't miss any Oki. Okay, so... Let's talk about getting some options, right? So this is gonna be a little bit offbeat, but I actually wanna talk about this. And this is another bad habit in lower ranks that's actually kinda not prioritized. But it makes sense because, you know, newer players haven't got a hold onto it yet. I'm gonna put it like that. Let me okay. see. Let me make sure I got wake up three frames set. Let me make sure I got wake up three frame set. All right, there we go. So, this is my question for y'all. When y'all finally score that knockdown, right? When you finally score that knockdown on somebody at lower ranks, nine times out of 10, they're gonna wake up pressing buttons. To really rank up, I feel like one, you should know how to anti-air and two you should have proper meaties and setups because people at lower ranks kind of have a bad tendency to always press buttons so if you understand how to actually meaty you could beat 90 percent of these players so to kind of revert back on how to fight balrog and how to deal with balrog do y'all actually feel like y'all have proper pressure and how to actually stop player habits? Like, are y'all actually capitalizing on y'all knockdowns? Yes? No? I would that... say not everybody is capitalizing, but I know you've taught me um, medias for sure. Right. So, I'm not bashing nobody, but just pointing out some habits that don't get taken to a sense if that makes sense once you score a knockdown you have to know how to actually capitalize and get full reward right because sometimes when i watch lower ranks i feel like it's a lot of scrambles right if you get a knockdown i see people wake up neutral jump people like you know not committing off that no not getting the reward off that one counter hit that they got instead they're just still scrambling still going for the hits just in neutral with like accepting the bare minimal damage so hating a character i can understand something but are you actually 
understanding your character. Oh, that's a really nice point. I like that you said that. I think that actually concludes how to deal with ball brawl, right? So overall summary, can't be afraid to fight the character. Look for ways to bait straight, whether it's neutral jumps, playing outside of light straight range, and actually, hold on. Medium straight and heavy straight are a thing, but I feel like those two moves aren't really done, but you can't forget about those moves either. But medium and heavy straight are more likely to get punished now because of the reduced pushback. So because of that, even if you block it, depending on the character that you have, you should be able to punish it. So if you're playing a shoulder with a fireball, nine times out of 10, you have a standing light kick. Um, just knowing your character and what to punish it with, pretty much. Because medium and heavy straights are more likely to get punished versus light straight. They didn't change light straight. They only reduced pushback on medium and heavy. So yeah, I would say that this was fruitful. Yeah. You did really good. Thank you. And I feel blessed and honored for having Hollywood Miss Patricia on the mic. So I truly appreciate that. The pleasure that. was all mine to be in the presence of Hollywood Nightmare on Elm Street. If y'all made it to this part of the video, which I'm, you know what? I'm going to be real with you. If you made it to this part of the video, you must really hate ball rock. So I don't know how long this video is going to be, but if you made it to this part, I'm glad you watched the whole video. Truly appreciate you. So uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, please remember to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Five uploads a week. You won't miss a beat. The road to 5k is almost complete and I will catch you in the next one. And I will actually drop Miss Patricia's Hollywood link into the description below so y'all can check her out. And yeah, see y'all in the next one.